Hello and uh, welcome back to another video. Uh, we're going to have a shorter one today. We're going to look at getting Common Lisp set up and installed on your development machine. Um, as I've been making these videos, I was hoping there'd be a reasonably good online Common Lisp REPL, but there isn't. So it really was a matter of sooner or later we were going to have to go through setting um, an environment up if you haven't already got one. So we're going to do that today. Now the process is pretty simple. Um, you only need a few programs and a couple of other files that you can use. So we'll get into that. Um, what we want to be doing is installing Steelbank Common Lisp read line wrap and emacs now um, emacs is going to be my text editor you've seen me use it before it's got a learning curve uh, and the version I use doom emacs actually takes a lot of inspiration from the vimvi text editor as well it's something of a hybrid of the two and uh, it, it does take some getting used to but as far as an editing experience for using Lisp with the highly integrated debugger and um, evaluation features I've never found anything like it and I was a hardcore Vim user and I switched to a version of Emacs that the Vim emulation was spot on you I wouldn't know I wasn't using Vim so that's all pretty cool uh, readline or app is a library for working with steelbank common lisp so we can use our arrow keys and steelbank common lisp is going to be our interpreter uh, and please forgive any background noise I believe the neighbors are out in the garden and they have children so they're maybe screaming and delight so let's just take that as encouragement, shall we? So, um, hey, ah, it would help if I tell it to install. Yeah, there we go. So um, the version of SBCL in this version of Fedora may not be the latest. The latest, I believe, is um, it's two zero four. Uh, it was released a few days ago. Uh, maybe a week. Um, if you're using Mac, you'll get the latest one, more or less. Uh, releases come out every couple of weeks. Um, you have a pretty good release cycle. Uh, but Common Lisp was standardized in, um, what was it, 1994? So, you know, the, uh, the language hasn't changed at all since then. And uh, you're not missing out on much, it's just compiler optimizations and um, speed improvements, which isn't super critical to the, the videos that we're doing now. So uh, we've got a lot to install here. This A lot of this comes from the Emacs package because it's a graph clap. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and install those. And it should be super quick. Um, I've got pretty fast internet. Um, now, a word. If you're using Homebrew uh, on the Mac, you're gonna want to use Emacs Plus. Um, you will have to tap that. Um, there is a separate repo, so you'll wanna, you know, brew tap the the Emacs Plus repo. Let's see if, while this is doing its thing, let's see if we can find it. Yeah, D12 Frosted Homebrew Emacs Plus is the, the repo we want. So if you are using the Mac, you're going to want to brew tap this repo and then brew install Emacs Plus. Um, I have not needed the the options, although I may elect to reinstall without the Spacemax icon because I'm not actually using Spacemax. I am using a distribution called Doom Emacs. Um, which I believe I have mentioned before. Uh, so 
yeah, if you're, if you're using homebrew, um, these are the instructions you want. And you can use Spacemax if you want. We're not going to install Spacemax, um, but for completeness sake, if you want a slightly easier editor, uh, because the one I'm using is, um, it is more, it is simpler to um, work with Lisp code. Spacemax is like an all-in-one kitchen sink um, version of Emacs. You probably wouldn't ever need to configure it, whereas the version I've got, because I'm wanting to use specific plugins and things like that, I've had to take more control and it's easier to start from Doom Emacs and add stuff than it is to start with Spacemax and rip stuff out. Uh, so uh, we're going through the download step if you're installing Spacemax, it really is just a matter of doing a git clone in your home directory. And this will install it. If you want to go my route, we've got this here. Let's see if we can find a comparison. So you know this is this is what Spacemax looks like by default. This is what Doom Emacs can look like by default, and uh, that command is now completed. So let's uh, jump back to the terminal, and everything's been installed here. Just to prove it, we're going to run SBCL, and we're just going to print Hello World. That worked. And you see that I pressed the up arrow here and we got that weird control character. I'm going to press up again. So that's what RL wrap does is it enables you to use the arrow keys to, you know, go back and forward, which is a super useful feature for a REPL, but by default, SBCL doesn't include it and asks of the programmer, well, if you want these features, install this because we don't provide it natively. Um, so that's just a, one of those little gotchas that if you have worked with Node or Python or Ruby or any of these other REPLs and you use the arrow keys, you'd be surprised why this wasn't working. This is what you need. You need um, read line wrap. Um, and if you want, you can just create like a bash alias in your shell so that when you type SBCL, it runs RL wrap SBCL and then you, you don't have to worry about it ever again. Um, but let's just, you know, Emacs has been installed now. Um, and if we run it, it's going to look uh, pretty intimidating. So. This is not how I want my editor to look. This is this is Emacs straight out of the box with no customization. So we're going to install Doom Emacs. Where's the installation command? So that'll take a minute or two. Um, probably less. Now this, this little warning here is um, I have my own configuration files which although I blew away all of Emacs to demonstrate this I've saved my config files um, so you shouldn't typically get these these warning messages um, because you know I've, I've already configured some plugins um, but this, this takes a while because it, it does have about 150 small packages to have to configure and build, which sounds like a lot when you're setting up an editor, but this is a one-time process really, or something you do maybe once a month um, to make sure that the packages are um, up to date. And uh, I apologize for that screaming child outside. It's not mine. I don't know whose it belongs to, but it's probably one of the neighbors. Um, it's the summer, it's a warm day, and we're all supposed to be locked inside, and nobody is staying inside. So yeah, 
we, let's have a look. We've got things like smart parens um, uh, and a few other things. If you've seen me uh, toggling between parentheses while writing Lisp code, that's what smart parens does. Projectile is uh, some file management stuff. Um, it's all it's all really good. Um, and again, to, to go back to the difficulty curve of the editor, it uh, it's really got a high learning curve, but it's worth it. In my, it is my opinion that as developers, we're sitting in front of editors a lot of the time. Um, really, most of our job is thinking, not typing. And so if we can have an editor that is basically an extension of our ability to communicate what we're thinking with the computer, we should be using the best tool for the job. And um, I think from an editing perspective, Vim is fantastic. Um, it's modal editing abilities are second to none. Um, but Emacs has some incredible project management stuff. Uh, so hybridizing the two in the Space Max and Doom Emacs modes or distributions is a fantastic compromise between the two. Um, and it, it will take you a while to learn how to use the, the Vim editing features, but it's worth it. And um, the the shortcuts and project management stuff that Emacs brings to the table again. Um, your editor becomes an extension of your body almost, and really that's the way it should be. Um, if you're fighting with your editor to get stuff done, then that's just a barrier to, you know, to finishing doing what you're doing. Um, now, there's something else we can be doing. So uh, let's open another window. We want to install QuickLisp. Um, now I've already got it installed and the way my container system works um, it's already set up but we're gonna just go through the process so you want to go to um, quicklist.org slash beta um, you know it's this is your your npm or your um, pypy of common lisp libraries uh, we can search for many different kinds of things. So say we want um, some SQL, something to do with SQL. Postmodern is, um, I hear good things about that. Um, there's one for Microsoft SQL database, MySQL's, you know, CL SQL Lite. This is a really nice one. It looks really nice. Let's see if we can find the API reference for this. Oh yeah, documentation, not the best. A lot of this is auto-generated. Uh, no, this isn't helpful. Um, Debian and Gentoo, why, why is that a category? Um, Anyway, this this is where you would go to, um, you know, um, find, you know, pack third party packages and um, get them installed. What we need to do is I've already downloaded this. Um, it's in my downloads folder. See, quick lisp .lisp. So we're going to. So because I'm doing this in a container, I need to jump into that container. Right, it's 
totally not what I wanted to do. Yeah, there we go. So we want to. Oh, cool. Um, I was expecting this to be a. I wasn't paying attention earlier, clearly. I was expecting this to be 1.4, 1.5 something for them to jump to the 2 series. That's great. Um, that's awesome. Uh, so let's find the installation instructions. Uh, we want to... Oh, okay, we'll load it from outside of SBCL. of course because it's in my downloads um, so you would do quick list um, now we're getting an error here because it says it's already been installed which it has so I'm gonna abort but you would continue this would ask you um, if you wanted to install it to your SBCL init file, which uh, if we go to the documentation, you know, it says we, we do quick start install. This is what you would normally see. Um, at the end here, you'll get this message. And you definitely want to run this um, because this will mean that um, you have access to QuickLisp um, all the time. And this means that I can do this. And this proves to you that the QuickLisp is loaded and working and that this error is just a, a warning saying, it's already been done. Um, and unlike Python, JavaScript, Ruby, where you'd work in an editor and then run something in a command line and jump back and forth and back and forth. Um, the the way you typically work with, with Common Lisp is to, in fact, stay in the editor, occasionally run a command um, that is bound to the editor, which I'll, I'll show you how that would work once the Emacs packages finish installing. Um, but you, you can see here that we now have access to CL project. Now I'm, I'm gonna make this fail because this expects an argument. Um, but it, this error isn't that this doesn't exist it's that I gave it the the wrong variable name uh, by default because I, I don't want to start a project here. Um, so you can see that just using um, QL quick load we can get access to these packages and to prove it um, let's jump back here oh, search results uh, let's go to the top project and this is what I use for setting up projects um, and you might want to consider using it too. Anyway let's get rid of that. Uh, we want to install the fonts and we are done. Um, the packages have installed, we've got the fonts so let's see what it looks like now. There we go, we now have Doom Emacs. You can see that the toolbar is gone. Um, we're, we're purely in an, a, a very distraction-free editing experience. Um, just the way I like it. Now we will um, we'll prove something. We'll jump to uh, Common Lisp, we'll set up a project. Um, 
it's dropped us into the toolbox. That's pretty cool. Uh, so let's load CL project. Uh, this is where we were doing the heads or tails thing. Uh, demo project. So that's gone away and built us a demo project. So I'm going to type space FF. If you see in the bottom left hand corner, uh, we're going to go to quick list, local projects, demo project. Now, uh, installing quick list will, ins will create this quick list folder in your home folder. And this is where you, you build packages really. Um, so local projects are projects that you've either cloned from Git or you've created yourself. Um, and this is where QuickLisp knows to find projects and stuff. So it's probably just easier to stick with this directory structure. So we've now got our main.lisp file. Um, and you'll see at the bottom, it's uh, trying to connect to um, Slink, which is the um, REPL. So uh, let's just make this a wee bit bigger. And again, just by opening this, we've got a REPL here. It connected if I do space M E F on the left here, you can see that we got hello world. Uh, let's do something else. At the bottom left, you can see the equals arrow is five. Um, see that this is all working and uh, if we wanted to Editor, um, this is going to go away and download the package and store it into um, somewhere in local projects and I can now uh, see that it's populated it's here I can start using it immediately uh, let's get rid of that and all of this is happening without me leaving the terminal. It's just in the editor. I type something, I evaluate it, the interpreter goes away and figures it out. So you tend to spend a hell of a lot more time uh, when you're working on code, especially during the run cycle. So we would, you know, write something, test it, run it. And you, you never have to leave your editor if you don't want to. Um, and that is kind of the cool thing. So. I think this video took a, a little bit longer than I was expecting, um, but this is how you would set up Common Lisp for your machine. Uh, I hope that was helpful. I've got another couple of Common Lisp videos due out soon. Um, so if you get stuck and you want to start running these examples locally, this is how you can follow along and set it up. Uh, so have a good day, stay safe during the, uh, the coronavirus outbreak and I will see you later.